A big thank you to all our presenters for joining in live to answer questions. Let's now move on to the focus area from the Sanofi team. First up, tackling migraine care, we have Theranica based out of Israel. Theranica develops drug-free, clinically proven electroceuticals which are advanced yet affordable. We have the co-founder, Ronan, joining us for more information. Hello everyone, my name is Onen Yashik, COO and co-founder at Theranica. We are a medical device startup uh, focusing on designing, um, developing and marketing of uh, prescribed digital therapeutics uh, products. Our first product uh, is focusing on migraine. It is called Nerivio. It is um, FDA authorized, um, wearable, non-invasive, drug-free uh, device with uh, proven clinical efficacy and, a ver and an excellent safety profile. Um, we are focusing initially on the migraine market. Uh, migraine is a, an extremely prevalent uh, medical condition in our world today. Uh, it is estimated that 12.5% of the world's population suffer from migraine. And the migraine medication um, annual market size is over $5 billion. Um, and this is why we developed the Review, which is an innovative neuroscience-based technology. It is clinically proven. It is drug-free. Uh, it is a connected device which is fully operated by a smartphone application. It is non-invasive, easy to use. The Review is available today in the U.S. and in Israel. Uh, in both regions, it is a prescribed uh, device. It is a received FDA uh, and CE authorization. Mechanism of action is based on an endogenous pain inhibition mechanism in the brainstem, which is called conditioned pain modulation. It's fully operated by a smartphone application and being a connected device, all of the treatments are and their nature are collected by the application, delivered to our backend server and are processed in order to provide customized information and provide the basis for machine learning algorithms about how our migraine customers or our customers uh, treat their migraines uh, with our device. As I mentioned before, it's clinically effective. It's safe, easy to use. It has the clinical uh, evidence, which is equivalent to the best prescribed medication in the market today. As you can see uh, from the graph here, the green bars show the clinical efficacy of Nerivio, and the gray or black bars show uh, the clinical efficacy of the best prescribed medications in the market, which is the family of triptans. As you can see, Nerivio is non-inferior to those prescribed medications. And on top of that, not only does Nerivio have non-inferior clinical efficacy, but of course it is a very safe uh, device. So no systemic side effects, no concern of drug, uh, drug, drug interaction, no risk of abuse at any number of uses. You can use our device consecutively, even two or three treatments, one after the other, and no risk of medication overuse, which is what happens when you get addicted, quote unquote, to the prescribed medication. Commercially speaking, uh, we launched the review in October 2019 in the U.S., the purpose of the launch was to evaluate market adoption. And uh, I'm happy to share with you uh, the statistics of that launch. You can see it is, uh, uh, we've received outstanding uh, responses and market adoption to Nerivio so far. Nerivio can offer much more than that. Being a true dig digital therapeutic device, so the Nerivio application is sending for each treatment that is made, is sending information which is of course private and HIPAA compliant to our server, which processes all the information coming from all of our patients and across all of our treatments in order to use the data, of course, anonymously for clinical research and to apply machine learning processing and algorithms. In return, uh, we are able to provide personalized customizations. And of course, we are able to share all of that information with the community of the professionals. The information that we collect and we analyze is not only 
extremely valuable for the patients themselves, but also to the community of the healthcare professional. So this is us. This is the team. Uh, the headquarter is based of, out of Israel, as you can see on the left side of this slide. We also have a fully owned subsidiary in the U.S., Taranica USA. And now we're in the process of uh, raising our Series C um, with the target uh, or the objective of using the funds for market access um, and expansion. So thank you very much. For the next focus area, we will be looking into gut health management, and for that we will have Microba, which is a microbial genomics company which provides their clients with access to cutting-edge technology to analyze gut microbiome, using evidence-based personalized guidance to improve gut health. Please welcome Kasra to share more. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be presenting at this Expo Day. Microba's goal as a company is to build the best microbiome analysis platform and develop new products to enhance healthcare. And so far, we're doing a pretty good job. So what is the gut microbiome? It is the trillions of organisms that live in our large intestines, consisting of bacteria, viruses, and fungi. You, in fact, have more microbial cells in your body than you do your own cells. So what is it that they do? They break down the food that we eat, they produce essential vitamins and metabolites. They modulate our immune system. They impact the way that certain drug classes are metabolized, and they can even produce neurotransmitters that affect your mood. The gut microbiome has become so important as being described by doctors and scientists as an organ in the human body. And we at Microba are in the process of deeply characterizing that organ. As you can see, this is an area of research that has dramatically grown over the past decade. The reason why? The gut microbiome is implicated in a broad range of diseases that affect millions of people globally. You will have heard of some of the bad bacteria, such as Salmonella and E. coli, but what you may not know is the gut microbiome is implicated in a range of diseases such as irritable bowel syndrome, which affects one in five people, and inflammatory bowel disease, which is on the rise. It even affects other conditions that aren't in the gut, such as Parkinson's disease, diabetes, and some forms of cancer. So what has the challenge been to date? The challenge is measuring the gut microbiome accurately, and this is absolutely imperative when considering the gut microbiome for health and disease. And this is the problem that Microba has gone out to solve. As a society, we've moved from the microscope to DNA sequencing technologies. The problem with DNA sequencing technologies is that they produce enormous amounts of very complex data. And we're talking about trillions of microorganisms that we need to capture and differentiate between. At Microba, we solved this problem of developing a metagenomic analysis platform that is best in class for determining who is in the gut microbiome, at what levels they're present, and what they're functionally capable of doing. At Microba, we're not only measuring known species, we're also discovering new species. Every dot on this graph represents a bacterial species. The green dots are species that Microba has discovered. You can see some of them are highly prevalent in the population and in strong levels of abundance. At Microba, we're the first company in the world to make this technology available to those who need it most. Consumers, healthcare practitioners, and researchers. So what have we achieved to date? We've helped over 10,000 customers and trained over 2,000 practitioners to deeply understand the gut microbiome. We've generated over 5 million revenue to date, and we've delivered testing solutions for corporate partners for the Australia, New Zealand, and US markets. We're about to launch our first product in Europe with Europe's largest pathology provider, and it's going to help us scale in Europe extremely quickly. We've also discovered a broad range of novel bacteria strongly linked to health and disease. The other aspect that we're very excited about at Microba is big data. This is deep microbiome data and correlating it with disease data. I'll use the example of inflammatory bowel disease, which is our flagship program. Using artificial intelligence, Microba, with over 95% accuracy, can predict G1 
just by using the gut bacteria alone if you have inflammatory bowel disease. We've identified live biotherapeutic candidates that have demonstrated to suppress inflammation and we performed studies that showing that we can predict the individual's response to certain drug classes. Microba now has a place in Plug and Play's startup Cresphere program where we're engaging with the company Sanofi to scope a consumer product to help customers with existing digestive health issues. This will utilize our existing features of Microba's testing capabilities. These include our proprietary swap technology for very simple, non-invasive sample capture, which doesn't require any liquid stabilization buffer or manual handling of the stool. We utilize our AI-powered gut health score, which has been developed from our global database, capturing the distinct microbiome signatures of 47 phenotypes of health and disease. As a result, consumers will receive a meaningful score of their state of their gut microbiome and provide consumers a target to work towards. And finally, our personalised and truly evidence-based call to actions, and these are our dietary intervention guides which have been tailored to the individual's gut microbiome to restore that gut health balance. This is delivered through our online interactive report and one-on-one -on -one with our telehealth service using our accredited practitioners. At this stage, Sanofi is conducting a technical ass assessment of our testing solution, so I look forward to sharing an update with you next time I'm here before you. Thank you for your time. I look forward to answering your questions shortly. Lastly, let's look into the allergy management focus area. Based out of Israel, we have Aura Air, an all-in-one indoor air purification and quality intelligence system. For more details, please welcome Roy to the virtual stage. Hi everyone, my name is Roy Friedberg and I'm the VP of Sales and Business Development of Aura the world's smartest air management platform. Aura was founded three years ago with the mission of improving indoor air quality globally. Since day one, the company worked with the two leading universities in Israel, the Technion and the Hebrew University. Today, we can see that indoor air quality is a global public emergency. It was a public emergency before COVID-19. However, nowadays we can see that the awareness to this problem increased. Aura developed a data-driven air quality platform based on user behavior algorithm through four main steps. Our first step is detection. Our system will detect indoor and outdoor air quality in real-time monitoring. The parameters are VOCs, PM2.5, PM10, temperature, humidity, smoke, CO, CO2, and more. We believe that before we act, we need to understand the origin of the problem. Our second step is our unique algorithm, which will adapt the functions and the recommendations of the device based on the user health necessities and needs. The third step is our unique purification and disinfection. Aura developed four stages that will purify and disinfect the air entirely from viruses and bacteria. The first stage is the pre-filter to capture large particles. The second is our patent ray filter, which has three different layers. HEPA for particle matters, carbon for VOCs and bad odors, and smart copper fabric, which targets viruses, bacteria, fungus, and mold. Besides that, we have two disinfection capabilities. One of them is UVC lamps, which will target also smaller particles, such as viruses and bacteria. And lastly, we have another patent, which is named Sterilizer. Sterilizer based bio, um, biopolar ionization technology, targeting smaller particles, size of up to 0.1 micron, including viruses such as coronavirus. Lastly on the technology is our data. Aura is using the data to analyze and provide recommendations and insights to our customers. 
We have an open API and we can integrate to almost every platform or building management system. Besides, we'll allow to our customers to see real-time measurements, forecasts, and history regarding air quality. Our system is applicable for every indoor environment, and we can be installed in co-working spaces, offices, hotels, schools, hospitals, nursing homes, and even transportation. Aura finished three successful clinical trials targeting the coronavirus, working with one of the best hospitals in the world, Sheba Medical Center in Israel. And nowadays, the company is continuing significant research on the coronavirus in the U.S. The device will cover up to 600 square foot with 2.5 air exchanges in one hour. And you can see we're working nowadays with global corporates and companies in different countries already operating in more than 44 countries. As part of the plug and play program, Aura started the collaboration with Sanofi, a leader company in the healthcare industry, targeting the problem of indoor air pollution and assisting mainly to allergic people. We see it as a huge opportunity and we're happy to take part in this great program. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like to find out more about any of the companies that have presented here today, please find one of us from the Plug and Play team and we would be happy to connect you. Let's move on to the Q&A session. So now we will have the presenters dialing in live to answer your questions. We will kick it off with some questions again. And if you haven't already, open up the Q&A boxes and type your questions away. Hello, and thanks for joining in for the second uh, session here today. Um, so let me just uh, kick off with the common question as we wait for uh, the questions to come in from the audience in the Q&A box. Um, so since uh, we noticed that all of you are coming from outside the region, I think we're just curious to learn um, what are your thoughts or considerations about APAC in terms of how health tech solutions are adopted here as opposed to maybe other parts of the world. Um, and then maybe I can have Ronan uh, start and then we'll go to each person. Okay, sure. Um, well, we, we, we operate mainly in, in the US. Um, actually, we, we saw our, our product is commercial for the past 12 months or so in the US. And we actually saw a very good uptake uh, to the product, especially when, um, the whole uh, situation with the pandemic started back in, in March. Um, we saw that people are extremely more prone to um, treating themselves at home um, and, and, you know, working remotely with their physicians and, and you know, uh, their healthcare providers. So um, we're actually, you know, uh, um, have a very positive feeling about this, this, um, this trend. Thank you. And, and Kasra, since you, you're closer to the APAC region, is there any sort of observation you can share? Sure. Um, I mean, APAC as a whole is, is, is quite vast. And one thing that we've uh, quite quickly noticed is that the GDPR in each of these countries is substantially different. So this means that the kind of, uh, in, in a case of we're targeting consumer, the consumer in these regions can be completely different. That's probably the, one of the key considerations uh, in this sort of space for us. Um, for microbiome in, in general, um, compared to the rest of the world, um, the, the size of the microbiome market in Asia and APAC is substantially smaller than Europe and the US. However, the Europe, Europe and the US are much more mature markets. So the compound annual growth rate in Asia is, is, is almost double compared to these other regions. So it's a great opportunity to, to pursue. Thank you. And uh, Roy? 
Yeah, so I think like Ronan mentioned, uh, so our main market is the U.S. The main market of all areas is targeting the U.S. and, and Europe. However, we do see a huge potential for air quality in the APEC markets. Those markets are much more aware to this problem. However, like I said in the presentation, now there's, there's a rising awareness almost everywhere. So I think this opportunity to scale in, in the APEC markets will help us later on, even in the markets in the US or Europe. Just right, since we're with you, I think we have a question from the audience. Um, for all that, is there a solution for a bigger space that is uh, maybe an office lobby? And secondly, how does the maintenance work for these products? So thank you for the question. The current device, the Aura Air device, covers 600 square foot. Besides that, we have two additional technologies. One is Aura Air Mini for smaller areas. And the additional device is the sterilizer, which is for industrial use, for bigger spaces than 600 square foot. And the idea is to provide holistic solutions for every space. So that's for on the technology. As for the maintenance, so it's a plug and play solution. The idea is very easy installation and almost zero maintenance. To change a filter would take you up to three seconds. No need, you don't need any technician or someone to install the devices or to replace the filter. Um, I'll, since I'm with you, I'll, I'll have one more question. Um, since it offers a very comprehensive solution and with different steps of our air quality detection, you know, like algorithms, purification, insights, why do you think it's so important to have such a comprehensive solution? Uh, you know, what does that holistic sort of perspective uh, give uh, as a new differentiation? The company sees the, the air treatment as a holistic solution because we think that before a device should operate, it needs to understand what's the problem and what's happening. Is it a virus? Is it dust coming from the outdoor to the indoor? Is it fire? And after that, we analyze and we see who is in, in that environment. Are there any pregnant women? Is it a hospital? And later on, we will provide the purification and disinfection. So it should be understanding what's happening, analyzing the situation, and only after that to operate in order to maintain a safe and healthy environment. Thanks, Roy. Um, just moving on to Teranika. Ronan, uh, a couple of questions we have. Is there uh, another potential use of your product for pain management, especially the Nerevio? And you also mentioned other use cases. What is in your roadmap for addressing other sort of pain conditions? Yes, absolutely. So um, Nerevio is using a mechanism of action which is called condition pain modulation. Um, it's a proven uh, endogenous pain inhibition mechanism in the human body. So basically, our first focus is, of course, on migraine, and this is where we are today. But we know from other clinical um, evidence and research that condition pain modulation can also be used for other um, very debilitating uh, types of medical conditions, such as fibromyalgia, um, irritable bowel syndrome, um, and other idiopathic pain uh, conditions. Um, post-traumatic headache. Um, so all of these indications are currently on our pipeline for 2021 and 2022. Um, uh, once we um, finish the development and the commercialization of Nerevio, which is what we're doing now, we plan to expand to those other uh, indications. Thanks, Ronan. Um, maybe from a patient's perspective, what are sort of the key considerations they would have to take uh, when it comes to evaluating the usage of uh, Theranica versus pills, um, and maybe in terms of like cost, convenience, or sort of the impact that it can show on, on the condition uh, itself in terms of like the speed uh, of recovery and stuff like that. Yeah, so first of all, it's, um, you know, there's a huge difference between drugs or medications uh, compared to a device, which is obviously from the beginning, it's, uh, you know, it's a drug-free treatment. Um, but on top of that, uh, we did by, by so far, we did like eight clinical studies, um, with our device. And basically we now have plenty of clinical evidence to show that, uh, the clinical efficacy of our device is as good as the best prescribed medications in the market. 
and and I'm not even relating to the over the counter medication, which is you know completely different story because usually that's with a very low efficacy. Um, so if you take into consideration that this is you know a device which is non invasive, it's drug free, it's it's of course um, very safe you know being a device and first and foremost it has you know great clinical evidence. Um, compared also to the best prescribed medications, then I think the the choice for the for the consumers or the patients is is you know should be very easy. Got it. Thanks. Um, just moving on to uh, Castro, I think the question we have from the audience is: Can we use this test along with Entrogerminia from Sanofi at home as OTC medicine and test? Um, and maybe is it approved for direct patient use? It's a very targeted question. I actually had to sneakily Google it on my phone as I was waiting for this. Um, so, <laughs> so firstly, um, microbes measurement accuracy and sensitivities is very great. We can accurately measure one cell in 10,000. So yes, I believe that we can um, utilize the microbiome, our, our test to, um, along with that um, product. Key thing there is around if the genomes for the uh, microbes that are used in that formulation are publicly available. My, Microba does access all the publicly available databases as well as our own proprietary one, but really the genome has to be available for us to look at that. With respect to it being approved for direct patient use, so the uh, Microbus test is a, is a non-diagnostic product. It is, uh, at present, it's an informative test. So we don't have to get those kinds of approvals. Um, now, utilising it with that specific product for a specific purpose, um, that might be a different story for which we're happy to, to engage with Sanofi in particular to, to work through that. Yeah, thanks for looking that up uh, while we were prepping. Um, maybe just a follow-up question that I have at my, my hand. Um, from a, a patient's perspective, how often should they be taking this gut health test so that they can track the course of change and, and, and make sense of the gut score health? Sure. So that's really dependent on the patient's needs. So for someone who's generally healthy and, and doesn't have any real issues with their gut, once a year is enough. For those who are having digestive issues, um, realistically, we say um, based on the time that it takes to change a habit, I mean, it's all well and good if you eat salad for a week and then have McDonald's the next, next week, you're not going to see much of a change. So we say for people that have digestive issues, roughly about once every three months would be ideal. Sure. Um, and I have a question from the audience. Is a B2B business going to be your focus? Also, uh, what are the areas you would be focusing on? Sure. So Microba um, has, is split up into separate divisions. Um, the division that I'm sort of presenting today uh, is our platform partnerships. So that's really that, that partner focus and trying to engage with companies who want to deploy their own leading microbiome testing in their own local markets. We do also have our therapeutics and diagnostics discovery division. And um, again, that is available for partnering. So we do have various um, proof of concept diagnostics, um, such as in the areas of um, immuno-oncology, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, IBS and IBD. These are available for partnering, as well as some of our novel therapeutics that have been, um, that are being identified through our program. So that's not only looking at uh, bugs as drugs, but also drugs as bugs. Interesting. Um, since we were just talking about that, um, you know, Microba has acquired an extensive sort of data set um, on individuals and collective populations. I'm, I'm wondering what could be sort of the possible additional products or solutions that you envision in the future. Is there anything that you can talk about that's immediately sort of in the pipeline? Yes, absolutely. So um, firstly, we acquire our data sets um, from um, customers that are willing that want to consent to share their de-identified data for research purposes we actually get a very high compliance from that roughly about 60 to 70 percent of people are willing to uh, to share that um, each one of our data uh, data samples has 2,000 metadata points so we have a very rich data set and we are developing a novel um, diagnostics so I've mentioned some of those uh, in, in the, from a previous question therapeutics as well 
Um, but what's also uh, possible is by um, new product development for new supplements or novel probiotics. So we are discovering novel microbes. Uh, we've roughly got about 600 novel species that we've identified and 369 of those are strongly linked to health and disease. Awesome, thanks, Kasha. Um, just moving on to a couple of common questions um, that we can use to wrap up the session. Um, Roy, maybe you could uh, answer this first. Um, given that you are all sort of working with hardware and software, what are some of the challenges that you see uh, that, that as opposed to a fully digital sort of a, a health tech solution, especially in terms of how you have to educate uh, the patients or consumers and in terms of managing your distribution? It's, first of all, it's a great question. So the idea, I would say that the main obstacles were on, on the mass production side to produce a, a hardware solution during the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's something very uh, challenging. However, because we manufacture the product in Israel, we now opened another assembly line in the US. So we managed to jump over this obstacle. As for the education, so I think nowadays the IoT devices are becoming kind of a very basic product in many places. And therefore we see our consumers uh, educated to the pairing process, to the real time data. So I think it's something that is much more common nowadays. Got it. Uh, Roland, maybe the same question for you. Yeah, so I, I fully agree with Roy. Um, basically from our standpoint, um, uh, we are a therapeutic device, so we have to have, you know, the hardware portion of, of the product. Uh, but having said that, um, the device is fully operated by a smartphone app in order to first make it easy for the patients to, to use the device, to report their, you know, their migraines, the, the, you know, and the outcomes of the treatments. Uh, and of course, allow us as, um, as a company to, uh, to be able to, um, you know, of course, privately and, and you know, uh, under HIPAA and GDPR laws um, to gather all that information about our patients and then be able to come up with, uh, with ways to help them. Um, so you have to have the hardware, at least in our situation, but of course you, you compensate that, quote unquote, with, um, you know, adding the, the software that makes it very easy to use and, and manage for the patients. Right. And uh, Kasha, I feel like you work with a slightly different situation, but you still have a physical and a digital complement. So wondering what's your perspective on that? So, sure. I mean, there's obviously the, the challenge of uh, making sure your supply chain is all working smoothly and uh, basic product is accessible. Microba, um, you know, our real secret source, um, and part of it is a proprietary swab, um, but it's a bioinformatics tool behind the scenes that is our, our core IP. Um, so what we do, we take the, the approach where we actually empower our partners to locally manufacture our kids at, and we supply them with all the relevant information that they need to do so. Um, so we've done that with our European and US partners and that overcomes that challenge. Awesome. Great. I think uh, that kind of brings a wrap uh, to the session. Um, thanks so much for joining in. Uh, it's been really educational and informative also for us to see your journey in these last three months. Uh, good luck uh, for going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Bye bye. If you would like to find out more about any of the companies that have presented here today, please find one of us from the plug and play team and we would be happy to connect you.